Hey, it's Shane from GotRom.com and welcome to the Frozen Shoulder Program. This program is going to teach you how to fix your frozen shoulder without drugs, without pills, surgery, injections, just with good biomechanics and optimizing all of the things which contribute to frozen shoulder that you have control over. That means your muscles, the, the tissue quality, the stretching, the way you move, all of the things that you can control, we're gonna maximize and optimize those, which is gonna give you pain-free range of motion in your shoulders. I've been teaching this methodology to over 20,000 people who are using our programs all over the world, so I think that you'll really benefit from this combination of the best scientific evidence on frozen shoulder, plus unique and innovative strategies and exercises that you're not gonna find in any any YouTube video, any traditional physical therapy program. These are very unique ways of fixing the shoulder. So I think you'll really enjoy this new approach to thawing out your frozen shoulder and getting it moving and feeling good again. So I look forward to seeing you in the program. So now we're gonna get into learning how to massage your muscles to hopefully make your shoulder kind of let go and unguard a little bit. Often your muscles are so spasmed and tense that a little mindful, gentle massage in the right places can really, really help. So I want your mantra to be slow and easy in the beginning with this massage. You're always gonna check in, is this helping? Is this not helping? Is it making it better, worse, or don't know yet? Um, but also what I want you to know is that your body is a complex system of systems. So it's not like the only thing that matters in the shoulder is the capsule. And if that's wrong, everything's wrong. There's also all of the muscles around here. There's also what's happening at your thoracic spine. For example, whether you had frozen shoulder or not, if your spine looks a little bit like this, which most people's spines do look like this because of sitting at a desk and working and driving and texting and eating and everything in this position, whatever's going on in your shoulder, it's gonna be more limited. That's the extent of my range of motion with this spine position. But if I learn some exercises to extend my thoracic spine and also massage the muscles of my upper back, my rhomboids and my traps and things like that, then things will be moving a little bit better. My body won't feel so protected and then therefore I can maybe get a little bit more range of motion. So posture and thoracic spine is what we're talking about. If for our whole lives our spine has been moving in this direction, we've got to do some things to get it moving in the opposite direction. This is upper back or thoracic spine extension, which does good things for shoulders, good things for necks. It's very important. So I like to use either, these are alpha balls from Yoga Tune-Up. They're a little bit larger and squishier. These are um, basically lacrosse balls. They happen to be a little bit bigger, but lacrosse balls are basically the same. Even two tennis balls can work. And what you're gonna do is put them on your upper back, like so. And however you need to get into the position is fine, but you're gonna lay on your back. You're going to put the lacrosse balls on your upper back and then you're going to slowly start rolling up and down with your hands here and your head on the ground. You might have to puff your chest up a little bit to be able to roll. This can be very intense for people in the beginning. So what I want you to do is explore from basically the base of your neck, massaging in that area, to in between your shoulder blades, to a little bit lower, and just start to get your muscles used to massage and pressure and friction in this area. Eventually, if your shoulders permit, and if your tolerance to kind of pressure and massage increases, you can try getting your hands either behind your neck or behind your head, and then massaging up and down. This can really up the intensity, but over a long period of time, it might be weeks for some, months for some, years for some, and depending on the texture of the tool that you're using back here, um, this should get to a place where it feels completely normal. Like I've been doing this for years and I'm using one of the more intense tools. And for me, it doesn't feel like much. It just feels like a nice massage on my upper back. That's how it should feel when the muscles are normal and healthy, but that might take some time. So regardless, you either are starting here and just massaging, or maybe you can go here. Maybe you find it kind of a sticky segment that doesn't seem to be moving and you kind of teeter-totter 
back and forth. It's almost like someone's taking your spine and bending it back and forth. Or you just kind of come to your end range and then take a big breath. <sighs> Sigh and sink. <sighs> Sigh and sink. And you can kind of see my posture improving. This is such a critical exercise for daily life, for posture, for frozen shoulder, for all of those things. Because if the spine isn't right, the center of your body, if it doesn't have good posture, everything else is fighting an uphill battle. So work on your thoracic spine with whatever two mobility balls you have available. If you know that you're more sensitive to massage, you're gonna to wanna to start with something softer like a tennis ball. Um, but if you're a little bit tougher, a little, get more used to pressure, um, or a little bit bigger or heavier, then you might just squish the tennis balls and you won't feel anything. So you gotta experiment with kind of which tool works for you. But you're gonna put it on your upper back, massage it, teeter-totter, <sighs> breathe and relax. Deep breathing helps to kind of down-regulate your nervous system. So that's the thoracic spine exercise. Give it a shot. So if you have frozen shoulder, one of the muscle groups that kind of seizes up and keeps it stuck in place is the pectoralis major and minor. And so we want to get in there with a little bit of massage. You're going to take two lacrosse balls and you're going to basically lean into a wall to get a little bit of pressure on this kind of chest area below the bony clavicle, so down in this area. You're gonna pin those muscles down and then you're gonna stretch your arm as up high as is comfortable for you and then repeat. So you kind of start with a bent arm and you scoop up to as straight of an arm as you can get. And that's gonna pin these muscles down and then kind of smear them apart, kind of open them up a little bit, which is gonna make your shoulders feel better. So to demo that, I'm gonna lean into the wall on this side I'm pinning down my chest muscles. You might uh, have to readjust a couple times. And then you'll just scoop your arm up and then back down. Or up and out to the side in a circle. Whether you go up or out to a side or some other motion that works for you or you just pin the muscle down and breathe and relax and let it sink in and then move. Whatever works for you. But when you're done, you'll probably feel like that shoulder is subtly just back a little bit and maybe you got a little bit more range of motion. So give the two lacrosse balls on the chest exercise a shot. The next thing we're gonna talk about is eccentric strength training, specifically for external rotation, but you can do it for all kinds of things. And external rotation is kind of a key range of motion that's missing in both functional and true frozen shoulder. And when I say functional and true frozen shoulder, you can think of frozen shoulder as basically on a spectrum where on the low end, more functional you have moderate pain and stiffness or mild up to you know pretty severe pain you can still be in the functional category and true frozen shoulders maybe in the early stages or when it's a capsular issue but in either case i go into this in great depth in my 37 page ebook where we talk about how to train the muscles what some of the world's leading experts on frozen shoulders say how long it lasts supposedly that might not be the whole idea and things like if surgery is a good idea or not. So check out that ebook. But the eccentric exercise for frozen shoulder um, falls into the re-education category in my system of mobility work. And this means you use strength training, specifically eccentric strength training, to basically let your nervous system know that it's safe to move. It makes your shoulder unclench or ungrasp, kind of like if you have a clenched fist, these exercises will make it let go and unclench. So to work on this external rotation range of motion, you're going to lay on your back and you're going to need a small weight, get your shoulder into a good position, get a small weight, and just slowly kind of let it fall out to a target. It could be a stack of books, a stack of pillows, and the key here is to go super slow. You should be moving like you're moving through molasses, very, very slow. And you kind of go and touch your target. If you need to lower the target or raise it to stay within a relatively pain-free range, then do so. If you need some extra assent uh, assistance from your free hand to kind of get you up or make you feel a little bit safer, you can do that. You also can put pillows or blankets or something underneath your elbow to make it more comfortable. You could even turn your body towards the hand if you need to readjust your body position you don't have to be laying flat on your back 
but simply a few sets of 10 to 15 reps is good. Don't overthink it and enjoy. The next exercise that I'm gonna show you is how to do tissue work on your subscapularis muscle. Now what the heck is that? Actually, in some circles, it's known as the frozen shoulder muscle because when it's tight, it can cause so much pain and restriction, it just kind of locks everything down. And it's super hard to get to. It's very difficult for even a skilled massage therapist to get to, but there are some creative ways that you can get it on your own. What you need is some tool like a broomstick, the hip stick, or the tool called the stick, which you use to kind of roll things out. Whatever has kind of like a rounded end, it's not too um, sharp or pointy. Um, one thing that's nice about the stick tool is it has a red kind of rubbery end, so the rubber feels agreeable to your body. If it was metal, it would not feel agreeable. This feels pretty agreeable because it's a nice smooth rounded end, but the rubber is also really nice. So I have a video on YouTube about how to use the the stick to do this exercise, but I'm going to show you now with the hip stick, which is different. So basically you, um, you need to put it like this, and I'm not going to put it directly in the middle of my armpit, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting it just towards the back, almost more towards the, the lats a little bit, and I'm just looking for like a little nook where I can kind of nestle it in there, and I kind of slump and lean forward a little bit. When I'm using this tool, I'm resting this end on my thigh, but with another tool, you could rest it on the table or depends on the height of the tool. But I'm kind of finding somewhere kind of back here in this area, and I'm letting my arm droop, I'm slumping, and then I'm just kind of wiggling around until I find something dense and junky. I can try different hand positions, maybe across my body. For me, this feels pretty good. And this is such a tucked away, hidden away kind of spot that most um, people don't even realize that it could be affecting their range of motion, but it definitely, definitely can. That's why they call it the frozen shoulder muscle. So try this out with whatever tool you have available. And then when you're done, see if your shoulder feels better, if it moves a little bit better, and I think it will, so give it a shot. So I wanna show you one of the most core fundamental principles of stretching, and I'm gonna do that while taking you through a short stick stretching sequence. So it looks kinda of like this. If you have a broomstick or any kinda of stick that looks something like this, oftentimes with frozen shoulder, it's painful to kind of use your own musculature to, to move, but if you can relax, then you can move a little bit more freely. So for example, if you want to practice kind of getting your range of motion up overhead, instead of you lifting with this muscle, you can use this stick to help you get up there. And when you come to kind of a painful, painful range, you stop just before that, you back out just a little bit, and then you contract all of your muscles. So I'm just kind of tensing up everything in this area, starting out lightly and slowly over time ramping up the intensity, intensity very gradually like a crescendo. It's not like tense up everything really quick and then release. It's more like slowly build 10%, 20, 30, 40, and then relax. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then relax. So this is what it looks like. Let's say I'm trying to work on this range of motion. I'm not directly out to the side. I'm kind of a little bit forward. This is called the plane of scaption, which usually is the, is the range of motion where you have the most space in your shoulder. So not to the side, not directly in front, but a little bit kind of at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to use this hand to help me come up in this direction. I find my painful range. I either just breathe and relax. That's technique one. Sometimes just taking a deep breath and relaxing will allow you to kind of move a little bit more into the range. Or maybe you come to your approximate end range and then you build the tension 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 as you're holding your breath. Relax and come up a little higher. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, relax, come up a little higher, only if it's available. You only come up a little higher, you only take up the slack if it's available. If it's not available, you don't do it. So that's kind of working on your overhead range of motion. You also could work on your external rotation of your shoulder, so maybe this is as much as you got. And so you use this stick to just very gently press you into that external shoulder range of motion. First, you kind of sit tall, get your shoulders down and back, then you rotate out, tense up everything, relax, 
Or another thing that I can do is I can kind of actively pull in one direction and resist in the other direction. So I'm trying to pull with this hand, and I'm trying to pull with this hand, and I'm kind of playing tug of war with myself. Or I can do the opposite. I can try to push in this direction, push in this direction, basically equal and opposite forces, whichever direction you want to go. But this sort of isometric contraction, this I'm tensing, but nothing's actually moving. I'm not kind of moving. I'm just tensing up and then release. Tense up, release is a good way of kind of starting to work on external rotation, shoulder flexion, even shoulder extension. So I can kind of go in this direction as well. I take the end of the stick. Maybe I come back here and that's my end range. Tense up, everything is tight. Three, two, one, relax. Maybe I've got a little more range. Tense up, relax. So the two important things about this video are, one, you can use a stick to help you move into ranges of motion that might be a little bit stuck for you. And two, Breathing and relaxing is the first technique, and contracting and relaxing is the second technique to get your body to feel safer in these ranges of motion and to help you move into new ranges of motion as they become available. Sometimes this is a slow process, so you're patient, you smile, okay, this is what my body's giving me today, and then you move on, and slowly but surely, you'll make your progress. So try out the stick stretching, try out the breathe, relax, hold your breath, relax or contract, relax. Remember to build up the intensity very, very slowly and never force yourself into ranges that are not comfortable. I think you really enjoy it. Give it a shot.